Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The King of Cannons, where we delve into the mind of this man, the most technical cannon rusher in the world, the man who records every game methodically in a spreadsheet, finding uh, key details and hex by hex, like sp square by square, where he can improve his cannon placement. It's printf, and of course, he does have a rule, which is one base or die trying. Uh, this man lives by a code. He also never plays on a barcode. So uh, all the complaints of, oh, wow, you just hide on a barcode account. So we don't know it's you. Or you surprise us with your silly cheese. That would never work in tournaments, you idiot. Well, guys, Printf never does that. He always plays on his named account. <laughs> uh, the, the North American Zerg community, especially, I remember hearing stories of them all collectively joining forces at LAN tournaments be like, man, how I gotta play printf next round? How do we stop him? They'd be like, six GM Zergs. Or something. They're like, I don't know, man. And like, <laughs> and a lot of them just started twelve pooling every game because they're like, well, he can't get the cannon rush up if we just twelve pool. And uh, Garatos, kind of in that line of thinking here. E Punk's Garatos, a very high level uh, player as well, is actually going to be going for uh, a sixteen pool, I believe, or sixteen or seventeen pool. Sees this going up though, and he's like, "Okay, I mean, I'm not going to pull drones to fight that. Like, you're going to get the cannons up. So Printf is going to get a contain up, but he's realizing, well, if this game's going on, I'm just going to go straight for the proxy. Like, we'll do the recessed cannon rush back there. I don't get to kill an expansion, but that's fine. Garatos gets up the gas, which means he is planning to go ravages most likely." And this drone could just be to scout, but he's got an overlord coming in now as well. Are you going to proxy hatch, mate? I think this might be just proxy hatch ravager. Wait, oh, it's a lair. Okay, it can't be proxy hatch then. Maybe the drone is just to scout or something like... What? Okay, he's going to build a hatch in the base. Maybe it's a distraction. You never know. You might just be trying to get an overreaction out of your opponent. Show him something. Go, hey, pull your probes. Waste your money. You know, just distract them. But Printf has seen that it's actually a really quick lair. Mutas is an option, right? Mutas can can be a problem, right? Um, Midas is super common. It works really well at lower leagues. I don't think it ever works for Sprintf. I mean, as a master of cannon rushing, it's like the most obvious lay attack choice. Uh, I don't know what else you're taking up for, though. Uh, yeah, he's going to be putting a Zealot on the front. It could be Swarmos, actually. I remember what, like back when people were doing like cannon battery layers of it with a Robo at the front. Some people said, don't go down your ramp. Just build a bunch of spines and queens. I can't remember. I think it was a European player who, who told me about this. They're like, and you just go one base swarm host. And then you can just break out with free units. And like, yeah, it takes forever. But like, they're always so slow to expand. It doesn't even matter. Because you've got these swarm hosts that are really efficient. And there is an infestation pit. And a dropper lord? Is he going to drop his zerglings on the low ground to get them across the map? What are we watching right now? Printf's building a cannon and a battery right there. I'm surprised he's not building the cannons closer to the hatchery. But I guess he tried to delay them as long as possible. Interesting. Oh, man. This is this is such a weird spot. A queen is building there. We've got... Yeah, Zerglings are being elevated out of the base. This is bizarre. This game is absolutely crazy. So few uh, workers on, on minerals. Big problem for Garatos here is there's not enough mineral income. I think he should pull probably one worker off one of the gases maybe lings do pop out in the main they go after the cannon damage it a little bit but realize with it coming up and the battery coming up they can't do much the lings will hold position probes could take that out yeah oh princef gets a nice surround i like how he pretended he wasn't going to fight it waited for garatos to step in step into the lings and then he does go for the uh the little surround maneuver oh he's gonna build spines he's gonna build spines inside the base as well the queen is spreading creep building spines in the back of printf's main base oh printf one base or die trying well that one base might become untenable in the near future because what's he got one stalker warp gate is transforming you better warp in two stalkers at a time in the near future queen's not hitting the probes which is a little bit of a problem probes are actually just gonna get pulled he realizes there's no damage here it's just one queen he's like yeah i can fight a queen he's gonna focus down these spines or at least one of them is printf i think printf can defend this it looks like he was building more zerglings but he cancels them or maybe that was drones i'm not quite sure swarmos are building back at home the spines both get cancelled and garatos proxy hatch i don't know if this was worth it it, it definitely distracted Printf and it keeps him pinned on one base. Like all his stalkers are on the inside. He's now warping in some stalkers and zealots and a robo on the other side of the map. Swarmos are all the way. Okay, so it's going to be one base Swarmos Nidus. I, I didn't think it would be both of those things, but that makes sense. I mean, if, if you're not too focused on breaking out, but instead on trying to kill Printf, that can be the way to do it. I do really wonder how it plays out if you just play one base Swarmos and look to break out very slowly. Because Printf will probably go Colossus in those scenarios. We, we've seen he can roast Locusts and Micro very well with the Warp Prism, so they can't really kill his units very easily. 
You'd need a lot of swarm moves to make sure it works. This spine crawl is still trying to build in the back of the face. New Nidus web going up. The stalkers are warping in where the other ones go. They moved across the map. I don't know how he got them outside his wall. Apparently, there's an opening in the wall that I didn't even realize. That is not a full wall off. Because he doesn't need it because he's got the contain at the front. The Swarmos get in. He pulled the probes too late. Oh, Prince F just made a big doo-doo, guys. Prince F just made a very big doo-doo. He's got to pull back to the cannon and the battery. The Stalkers need to not stand there. Careful, careful, mate. These are Locusts. They do crazy damage. <laughs> locusts do absolutely insane damage. He's pushing up. He's pushing up the ramp at the same time. That's why he's... I'm like, why is Prince F microing this so bad? Uh, crappy observing from Pig. It's because he's forced two spines at home. Almost breaks the ramp, but not quite able to do it. These Swarmos are still alive. He lost all of his Stalkers at home. It's a disaster, mate. Okay, he's going to warp in five Stalkers back there. He is going Robo Base. Speaking of Colossus versus Locust, we know he likes Colossus in general. He's going to try and focus down the Nidus Worm. So Gyarados is going to drop it on the outside and just siege from a bit further away. That leaves Printf with some economy, though. 17 probes, but there's only 18 drones for Gyarados. He did pull a few workers off gas. The Stalkers are an issue, though. Okay, where are we going to go for the Locust? Maybe just go for the cannon and the battery and get rid of the pylons and stuff. I'm not really sure. We've got some links coming forward. He did load back into the Nidus nice and safe. And there we go. Looks like, yeah, he's going to go for the battery to make sure Overcharge can't come down. Interestingly, not taking out the cannon. He's going to go straight for the Nexus. Oh, the Locusts are about to disappear, but they yeah, they don't quite get it. 127 hit points. One or two more volleys. That would have gone down for sure. So one more round will do it. But is that... I mean, okay, this is this is so weird. If, if Printf can break his ramp, it's all fine. He's got a Colossus, a bunch of Stalkers and Zealots. Problem is, look at that, a single, single Swarmos throws. Not enough, 15 <laughs> points the pro pool in this cannon with 15 kills, hold on. And Printf's like, okay, best defense is, is a full offense, man. A good offense, let's get in there. He's gonna take out one of the spine crawlers. The Queens have mostly used up their transfusers. Locust being forced to use defensively. Transfuse does go down on the spine crawler. It's gonna be enough to buy a moment's respite, but is a moment's respite enough? The Zealots go down, all the Stalkers and the Colossus survive with just a little bit of paint chipped off the Colossus and one Stalker. That is a lot of Swarmos, 11 Swarmos, but he might need to evacuate. Oh, this is so hard because the Locusts uh, can't actually fire that well. Printf's so good with his micro. The Locusts go forward, a Queen goes down. Oh god, oh god, oh god, he needs it to come off cooldown, guys. He's going to try and get out. These Swarmos blocking each other, though. Get in there! Get in there! Oh my god, a lot of drones get roasted! A lot of drones got blocked and roasted, but he saves about 12 of them. Uh, he, where, where, where can he pop? He's got one Nidus on the other side of the map. So he can take out Printf's main, and then Printf doesn't have enough to rebuild a Nexus. So Printf can't mine, whereas Garatos can. Ah, okay, so Garatos pops another Nidus up over here. He's going to lose the Nidus Worm at home, so he can pop into the main. I think the main's a better choice. He's going to take it out here, but he's in a bit, of, a bit of panic. He's trying to build spines, a hatchery, and then he's got a bunch of drones left over, but it's only Swarmos left. Guys, I, I think he might have messed up. I think he should take the main, because then they can only attack up this ramp. I mean, they'll, they'll still be very annoying. Printf shows. He's so good with his micro, right? He will always find a way to get in there. Printf right now realizes the drones have evacuated. He's like, look, this tech isn't important for now. Printf is revealed. Garatos is not. He knows that there's a hatchery. He finds it. There we go. He finds it. But with four spine crawlers and ten swarmos, surely there's no way you can get through this. I mean, that is an insane defensive force. But keep in mind, guys, locusts last 18 seconds. It's a 43-second cooldown. It's more than double the lifetime of a locust to cool down. He throws them all at once. No, Garatos. Garatos made a doo-doo. Oh, that's a really big mistake. Okay, he's got to chase these units back as far as he can. He's got to chase them back. Oh, he's trying to, he's waiting for them. He's trying to wait for them. They don't have very long vision. Oh, Prince F saw them, but they didn't see him because the Colossus has long sight range. Garatos doesn't reel. Prince F gets in there and the locust is so deep on cooldown. Oh my God, Printf, because Garatos got fancy and tried to camp the cliff, hoping Printf would inch back in, seeing if they weren't there anymore. And instead, he loses vision. And once you lose visual contact with the Stalker Colossus, they punish you. They're going to take out the Nidus Worm. Taking out the Nidus Worm stops him from escaping anywhere else, limits mobility, limits his ability to micro in and out. He took out a Spine Crawler as well. This is seven Stalkers, one Colossus. That Colossus has 19 kills. I'm telling you, I never thought Colossus were a great unit in a situation like this until I saw what he did in that PBZ that he played on Neo Humanity we cast, we cast the other week. That game was wild. <laughs> and I know it's very hard to just kill his bloody Colossus. Three spine crawlers moving forward. We've got, I like the way, you see, he did the cliff, he did the cliff ambush really well that time. He got a Stalker. That's huge. The Stalker plus three spines. Another Stalker goes down. The spine's almost dead. 
But I mean, as long as he just keeps throwing a few swarmos at a time, I actually think this is this should be possible for Gyarados. He's only got one drone mining though. He lost all of his drones in that previous attack, so he can't build anything. The spine's going down. There's only a few seconds here, but Prince F realizes he has to be decisive. Oh, he loses another Stalker, but he's killed all the spines. Oh, the Swarmos are going to try to throw the Locust right on top so that he can't run away, but you can see the delay on it and how slow they are. Printf knows, run away for 18 seconds, and then I got 25 seconds to run back in, kill that last drone, pick off some Swarmos, and have a bit of a party. And you can see these Locusts, they've got such short vision, so the Colossus sees them much further away. They're already coming back in for round two. One Locust ready to fire, the rest are still about 20 seconds away from being ready. So two of them fired there, they damage one Stalker, but good micro to pull back the weak boy. And what can he do? He can hide in the main base. And uh, maybe build a single extractor in there, I guess, is what he's going to do. Yeah, he's going to try to move to the main. Maybe taking the main, what I pointed out earlier, would have been a better position if he had the spines there, rather than Printf being able to attack up a, such a bigger ramp here, which was much nicer for him. So the Swarmos are going to come in, but he uses the Locust just to clear the cannon. Printf's going to be happy with that. His Colossus can now walk up the cliff and take out the Swarmos. I think two of them are about to cool down. Okay, so yeah, he used four of them, five of them. But that means there's still two left. These Locusts need to scare back the Colossus. He's got an Overlord well positioned on the right. He's got a bit of creep here from the early game. This is that early tumor that he pooped out inside Printev's face. Now, Printev's got Stalkers and a Colossus here. Uh, looks like he's still microing them all as one group for now. That's only four, four Locusts. Yeah, he, he can just focus those down. He can absolutely focus those down. He's worried because their damage output's so high. He doesn't want to just like lose a Stalker or two for free here. But I actually think that would have been the perfect opportunity to go in. Printev does not want to throw away this game though. He's going to try and stay cool, calm, collected. Now there's five Locusts that, that are ready to fire. Five Swarmos, which he definitely can't fight. Two, I, but I think wait for this to run out and then just barrel through the next wave. And I think Printf's going to realize this. He obviously can't mine, but neither can Garatos. They don't have bases. It's all about these units, guys. Seven Swarmos versus four Stalkers and a Colossus. And you can see the supply inefficiency of the Swarmos. Look at that. He damages the Colossus. And immediately, Printf doesn't even attack them. He knows they're about to expire, so he moves right back in. And Garatos is like, oh god, oh god, 15 seconds. You two need to defend us for the next 15 seconds. He throws the Locust, but letting them land is a huge mistake. That means the Colossus can take them down from far away. The Colossus can shoot them right now. The Stalker does take a bit of damage. He's going to go for the Nidus Worm to make sure there's no escape. He says, hey, as long as I make sure there's no escape, that's good. He doesn't realize there's no other Nidus heads on this map. Oh, wait, he doesn't... He doesn't even need there to be no escape. He's like, no, no, I'm just going to go for your buildings. He's not just running away from the Locusts. He's just going to go eliminate the buildings. The spawning pool's already bleeding out. There's just two extractors left. Printf's like, killed Unitas. See ya. The Locusts, which is so focused on defending themselves right now. Oh, no, no, Printf. Okay. Realize, Printf, you got to realize you just got to kill those extractors. You win this game. You don't need to kill them. They're both stuck in the same mindset. Gyarados is like, oh, God, we got to stop him cornering us. Printf doesn't realize. I thought, I thought that pullback... Because it was so quick, it was almost before the Locusts even got close to him. I thought he was pulling back to kill the buildings. Oh, but no, Printf, don't throw this game. You know what? It's a, a few seconds till those two Locusts come off cooldown. Kills the one drone. Oh, he wanted to kill the drone. The drone! He clicks the drone, doesn't even bother with the Swarmos, and he runs across that. Garatos realizes! Garatos realizes, he's like, ah, oh, shit. And a single Stalker comes back and baits this. Garatos starts to kill these buildings. He's like, well, well maybe I can win a base race. But no, there's still two cannons in a pack of buildings on the other side of the map. Garatos is checkmated here. And there's nothing he can do but watch himself lose this game. Which really, oh, it's painful. It's a painful way to lose. He's got to leave one Swarmos to finish those buildings if he really wants to commit to it. He's going to throw two, come across the map. But, uh, man. Is Garatos, by the way, is that the Pokemon uh, Gyarados? Gyarados or something like that? It, but, but in Spanish, they spelt it Garatos? Is, or, or no. Or is this a reference to something? Let me know in the comments if you guys know. I believe this Epunks is a uh, Latin American team. So I think it's a... Sounds kind of Spanish-y. Because um, that's how people that speak Spanish sound. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for watching, guys. GG, well played. Printf does take it out. That's a very interesting game. Proxy Hatcher to Swarmos Nidus into a weird base trade, but we see that Printf has such a deep understanding of how those Swarmos work and when they're weak and when they're strong. He knows when to fight, when to run away. A textbook example of how to make unsupported swarm hosts look kinda weak. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you like these sort of videos, check another one out on the screen. Cannon rushes are fun. Uh, I'll catch you guys next time, and uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye and good night.